So this thing that, uh, that I created and that we teach through RTS, Resistance Training Specialist Program, um, it's not just about the fact that resistance training, which covers everything from, you know, what the world, where the world thinks aerobics is not resistance. They equate uh, strength training with resistance. When in fact, you know, when you sit on the, the stationary bike and you push on the arrow, you're changing the what? The resistance, right? Um, about the only place you're not going to have resistance while doing cardio is in outer space. And, uh, and so that makes it um, really tough to get your heart rate up because your skeletal muscles aren't being taxed. And that's really what cardio is, the skeletal muscle challenge based upon a certain amount of resistance. So let's talk about resistance in general. One of the things we try to do is not just say, putting a dumbbell in your hand is important and moving it's important. In fact, that becomes secondary to the fact that we need to understand the physics of resistance and the mechanics of its application. Physics doesn't have to be that hard. I know it's scary. People, ah, oh, I didn't take that in school. Oh, I took it and I failed it. Oh, it's like, or, or people are like, I took physics and I aced it. But those people, I also see them never using their physics knowledge in the gym. Let's make this applicable. Here's the first example. 10 pounds is not 10 pounds. Well, that, the way it's stated, is probably not exactly accurate. Let's put context to it. 10 pounds is a number on the side of a weight is not necessarily 10 pounds of resistance. So the first thing I have to ask you is, does the amount of resistance that you hand somebody, does it matter? I mean, you're, you're going to do an exercise with a client. Does it matter whether you hand them 5 pounds or 10 pounds or 15? Does it make a difference? Hopefully, hopefully you're not going, it's a trick question. It's not a trick question, it really is, does it matter? Well, I get the same benefit if someone can do 15 whatevers to failure across 8, 9, 10 reps, whatever. Just an example. And you hand them 10 or you hand them 5, is it going to create the same effect, the same outcome, the same response, the same adaptation? Is it going to be the same? Most of you would probably agree as a general statement that no, 5 to 10 to 15 are going to be very different effects on this person, different challenges, different forms of stimulation, different resistances. Okay, if that's the case, and if that range of 5 to 15, triple the original resistance, if that matters, then consider this. There are at least, at least, there's more than, but there's at least two ways, two reasons why. 10 pounds is never 10 pounds when you're moving it. Almost never, depending upon how you're moving it. One is called a moment arm, and we're saving that. This is the easier thing to see for most people. It has to do with inertia. The property of a mass, and I don't want to go into definitions all that kind of stuff, but this property is important. I know every one of you has heard this statement. What's well, inertia? Oh, you know, it's kind of where... Uh, oh, something's resisting to change, like it's uh, something sitting still doesn't really want to move very well and something moving doesn't really want to stop. And so, um, and then we start running into the Newtonian stuff, like an object moving a straight line, blah, 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 blah. Uniform motion, wants to maintain. So anyway, this idea that five pounds is different when it's sitting still and you try to move it, and five pounds moving becomes a different thing when you try to stop it. It is about the change, resistance to change. The more abruptly you try to change it, it's not about speed. It's about changes in speed, acceleration and deceleration. Okay? And across several different equations, these can become exponentially influential numbers. Here's an example. Now, what you're going to have to do is pay attention. First, let me show you. I've got this super high dollar tensiometer. It's called a fishing scale. It's about $6. So don't expect a whole lot of accuracy from it. I don't actually care what the exact numbers are. And in a minute, we're going to zoom in as, you've, as if you were stepping up here. And I want you to see what happens to the red arrow. So come on in here for a second. I, wanna, I want you to take a look at this. Let's see if we can get this coordinator for you. I've got a five pound weight. So it says five, five pounds. Got it? And right here, what you're going to see, come in just a, maybe a little closer. A little bit, yeah, 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 yeah. So here's the deal. Glare, can you see? What's it, what's it look like? That's pretty good. This is over here. 
and like I said, it's a quality scale. It says six, and maybe the weight's off too. I don't know, but let's say it's five, okay? And if I move at this speed, you don't need to see the numbers to recognize that the needle, the red needle, is really pointing the same direction. But I want you to watch what happens here as I start to go faster. And again, you're like, oh, I can't see. Just put your eyes on the scale, watch the red needle. Zero at the top, 15 at the bottom. And if I stop beating up my table, if I do like this at the bottom, it goes clear down to here. Guys, that's 20. And what was it at the top? Zero, zero, zero. So tough to see. I'm going to show you another example in a minute. But my point is, that was five pounds. And the way I choose to move it makes it zero at some parts of the range and 20 at other parts of the range. And that's just with the rate I currently decided to decelerate it. That 20 could be 50, depending on how far it fell, how fast it decelerated at the bottom. So what? You just told me whether it was 5 pounds or 10 pounds or 15 mattered. Did you know that the speed, or more importantly, the acceleration and deceleration rate of your client's movement, of your movement, changes the load? Let's take a look at that for a second. If you understand a little bit of muscle Let's call it physiology. And this idea of a sliding filament theory and then a short, shorter, length, shorter length of a muscle and a longer length of a muscle. And to some degree, there appears to be a, a training effect at those ends or the middle and that kind of thing. And what's interesting is, if your short end is always accompanied by a weight that's flying to zero, you're never training that end of the motion. Every one of your big wood chops, where the weight goes flying up on the other end of the cable, you're not training over here. You tossed it. And what did you toss it with over here? What was your launch timing producer? Well, link tension says that some of it was passive stuff, some of it was active stuff to create the total tension. The big thing is you're using your whole body, your own inertia, your own mass to overcome that mass. So you really you really, in the way we're performing most exercises, are trying to find a way to get the absolute least out of the exercise. We're looking for the most weight moved with the least amount of effect, apparently. Because that acceleration deceleration reduces the stimulation from the load. And so you see a lot of people, oh, I do 200 pound curls. Dude, you're actually doing about maybe 80 pounds of that. The rest is a clean and curl. So these are important things to recognize, especially if you're dealing with populations that are less tolerant. Because sometimes this all goes wrong and their swinging becomes uh, a catch they have to deal with. It, it, in their learning curve of throwing stuff around, they become responsible for it along the way instead of tossing it. And that intolerant tolerance of this real person or this compromised individual becomes a physics nightmare for them in terms of what happens inside their body. Just some stuff for you to think about. And if we're going to pretend to be experts, oh, I'm an exercise expert, you should have known this. You better be able to describe this. More importantly, you better be able to apply this understanding to what your client needs at this stage in their progression, this, this part of their stimulation. Speed training is a big deal out there. And the idea that if you're not moving fast, you're going to be slow. Move fast to be fast. Move slow, you're going to be slow. Well, there's a whole bunch of problems with that idea. Evidence that Someone doing a one rep max while moving incredibly slow. Inside, neuromuscularly, is moving super fast. Things are flying inside of there. Evidence that your intention to move fast via something like that is as important as actually moving fast in many ways. I'm not saying they're substitutes for each other, but they're not the same thing. One of the most important things to learn about rate of movement, tempo of a repetition, to me, is first and foremost the physics of it, and secondly, progression of the load and the physics of it as the person becomes more tissue tolerant, skill tolerant, systemically tolerant of more stress. That's an undeniable truth. To take a sledgehammer and start beating on somebody without them getting better at dealing with being, being hit by a sledgehammer is a problem. It really is a problem. It's a version of malpractice if we had any ethics in this industry at all and any standards that were worth anything. Let me show you one more example. Come follow me over here. We're going to do a David Letterman behind the scenes walking across the 
area of thingy. And I've got another example over here. I've got a, actually a, a scale, and hopefully you can see this little guy, and I've got it kind of sort of set for about my body weight, roughly. And you know, it's kind of balancy. And uh, if I just move my hand like this, even that little bit of motion with my really light forearm and hand <laughs> shows you that my weight is changing. As I went up and accelerated, I got heavier. As I went down and stopped, in this case, the, 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 that thing made me lighter and heavier. So that's just me and this little simple thing. And obviously that's not affected by side to side movement because this is a vertically, um, uh, a vertically measuring thing, the scale based upon gravity, right? So, but I wanna show you how much more dramatic it can be if I just grab, put the 10 pounds more and I'm gonna grab a 10 pound <clears throat> dumbbell and this thing should be kind of balancing again if I did my job. Eh. Uh, is that about it? It's pretty close. Is the dumbbell really 10 pounds? That's the question. Yeah, roughly 10 and a half. Now I'm gonna sit here. It doesn't take much movement of mass to change things. And the more abruptly I try to change it, as I mentioned, the more forceful that thing pops up and down. Now, here's an interesting thing. I'm currently standing here with my body weight, 200-ish, and this 10-pound weight. I'm gonna put it back on my body weight. So this back on 200 pounds. So obviously, the, I, this, me and this weight are heavier than what the scales um, set at. But this 10 pounds moved upward enough, eventually brings me up with it enough that I get lighter than my, even my, I'm holding it. There's 210 pounds here, folks, 210. And right now, I can move it to where I'm lighter, as far as the scale's concerned, I'm lighter than 200. This is a dramatic, go ahead and let's go back up here for a second maybe to finish up. But that's just, that's just, in some ways, the least of it. And, um, a lot of people will sit there, even after that discussion, they'll go, well, but is inertia a bad thing? No, think of it just exactly like any other increase in load. It's a progression thing. It's a what's the goal thing. It's a who are you working with thing. You got a 90 year old, you got a 60 year old, you got a 70 year old, you got someone starting versus someone that's really physically advanced, it's, you've progressed them there, not just because they look good. This is about progression, this is about responsibility is really a big part of this story. So anyway, that's a piece of the puzzle. I'm gonna show you one more thing, if you don't mind. These guys that tell people at the beginning of their, well, at least one presenter does, I heard a couple times. We are the gold standard in certification. So here's the little manual copy of it. Uh, let's go down here and see what they know about resistance because the gold standard. Let me see. Oh, that's a crummy copy. Free weight exercise. Parentheses. Constant resistance. That's synonymous in their mind. Free weight exercise is a constant resistance. To use constant load based on barbells and dumbbells throughout the range of motion. That's why you use a free weight. To get a constant load. Anybody got a physics-based problem with this statement from our gold standard people? Yeah, they should have stuck to marathons like they did in the beginning, okay? Because they don't understand resistance at all. Even the next statement, which is off topic, machine weight exercise, variable resistance, actually, ironically, the only way in the world you can, although a lot of them are built to vary resistance, the only way you could get a constant resistance in a gravity world is with a machine. That would just have to be the way it was designed, though. So these things are somewhere between always inaccurate and can, based on the design of the machine, be inaccurate. Gold standard. Whew. So anyway, uh, you can't argue with that stuff. Physics, it's not my, it's not my fault. I, I didn't invent it, right? So those are some things that over time, not only get more comfortable with it, not only go, oh, that's cool, listen to him, you should be able to, to display this and you should be able to, to use it in the creation as one of the ingredients 
in the exercises you build for your people and how you progress them and understand how to micro progress the people that need it right based on their tolerance so that well, you're not just adding five pounds 10 pounds 15 but you understand the way they move that five means everything and another point I kind of skipped over guys if it's zero at the top of all your exercises how many of you and this is a great topic for a video how many of you have heard full range of motion full range of motion all your life all my life I've heard full range of motion you got to move full range of motion there's all kinds of client defined reasons why full range of motion is a topic to reconsider because we don't even know what creates the full part what's the limits of full and so many times it's the arbitrary rules of a specific exercise or sport but what about the idea of full range challenge the only point of having resistance in your hand is to challenge or stimulate throughout the range And if you're moving full range whatever that may be or whatever it should be and you're not challenged throughout it appropriately stimulated throughout that range there's no point in moving there there's no point in moving there there's no point in moving for the sake of moving the point is moving guys I'm using this example again if you were on the International Space Station up there you can move all you want to and you don't get any exercise effect from it so if I ever do stuff where this number ends up zero that part of the range that I moved to did nothing so really it's about control understanding progression and man understanding the basic application of this cool thing called physics which is what resistance is all about